Hi, everybody. My name is Jeremy. This is Red Means Recording, and today we're looking at two modules from Qubit that recently got new firmwares. The data bender got a brand new firmware with some extra features, which we're going to run through. And the Aurora got a uh, alternate firmware with a new type of reverb. And in the current interest that I have of getting the most out of the gear that I have and exploring how I can use it in new and interesting ways, um, that's what we're doing. Just a quick little demo of what these new firmwares sound like. So let's start with data bender because that's going to be sort of the more interesting one. Okay, so I have a sequence coming out of Constellation that is triggering everything in here, um, and we're going to start with a bitbox. I've got some ambient sounds on there, sound like this. I have uh, control that I've assigned to their decay. Just a really simple sequence that we can make both percussive and long if we want. So what got added to the data bender? One of the more interesting things that we got was the ability to now have uh, two different corrupt modes. So the corrupt thing um, is like a bit crusher. Here, bring this in. So nice little bit crush kind of thing going on there. We also have this kind of nasty one that I've actually never used. And then this one, which is destroy, which I actually really, really like. But now we have a DJ style filter. So DJ style filters are ones that go high pass on the right and low pass on the left. And you can hear it's very resonant. So be careful as you move through this. But I think probably the one that most people are gonna use is this vinyl sim, which actually is more than just turn it up and you get more vinyl sim. Uh, it's actually like increasing the density of this stuff there. So very, very nice vinyl sim. And I like that a lot. I'm going to leave it there. Okay. So we have bend and break. Let me explain what these are doing a little bit because I don't think I did in my original video for this. Both of these are automated, meaning I don't have to do anything. They just kind of do neat stuff as you can hear. Bend in the middle. It's going to jump around two octaves. This is one octave right around here. And then over here, we're gonna add some reverse. And then down here is no bending. We are hearing the repeat function up here. To the right, we have a tape stop effect. A slew, meaning that it will go up and down. And then this is everything. So I didn't catch this the first time I used the data bender and all the times I've used the data bender. I just thought it was like, less and more, but it's actually more complex than that. Each little section here has like specific sort of stuff that it adds and takes away, which is really neat. Break over here, no breaking. This is gonna create two subsections out of the time and repeats. This will jump around. See how we're getting like a rhythmic sort of nature out of this before uh, it was just sort of like more ambient. At noon, more subsections. Here we get audio rate. And here we get silence, little breaks. And then over here, we get everything. So this isn't just more or less. There are little pieces in here that will be more specific. And then in combination, it's just a joy. So both of these are dictated by the time function here. This is the duration here of when it's going to be able to sample the audio to do all that stuff. And then the repeats are how many slices within that that it creates. I have this in clocked mode. So again, just one of my favorite modules in the entire world. Um, we did get attenuverters for everything in here. If you hold down shift and turn the knob, it will control how much the incoming CV will affect that control. We also, if we hold down shift and turn the mix knob, we can make this super stereo or mono. So this is really nice. We can choose how much 
stereo we're getting out of the module. And I love anything that takes uh, incoming signals and makes them wide. I think that's a really, really great addition to the firmware. It's superb. Okay, so we're going to switch over to micro mode now. This works a little bit differently. Turn off the vinyl for right now. So in micro mode, it's going to create little micro loops. And when we are an octave above or below, you'll see the LED change. So now we're an octave. If I hit this button again, it'll reverse the signal. Oh, I guess yellow is reverse, I'm sorry. And then in this mode, break traverses through the current little sample. So lots of really interesting glitching in here. But my favorite, my favorite addition to this now is that we can sequence with pitch, this uh, bend response to one volt per octave. So I just happen to have a one volt per octave sequence here. Let's go ahead and put it in. Here now, we're getting a pitch sequence out of it. That's something we could do with the Aurora before. With the warp function. But now we can do it in the micro mode thing. And it makes it a lot more useful than just sliding around in pitches. I really, really appreciate it. Pretty neat, right? Beta Bender is, I think, one of the best effects modules in the entire world, and that's why I own at least two of them. So that is the new firmware update for our friend, the Qubit Data Bender. Next up, our friend, the Aurora. So I did a video on this where I ran a bunch of stuff from my digital audio workstation into Aurora, and it was great. The original firmware is very colorful. I think a lot of people would probably say that it doesn't sound particularly reverby. Uh, it can, uh, but it's very colorful and very strange. So now we have a feedback delay network reverb, and that's what we have going on in here with our Surface. So I'll bring this down as much as I possibly can, and I'm gonna bring Surface in into Aurora. One thing I really like about this reverb is it sounds fantastic fully wet. Uh, and we're gonna come back to reverse in a second, but listen to that. Just instant ambient, like it's, it's great. <laughs> So I'm going to leave it fully wet for right now so we can explore what the other things do and you can really, really hear it. We have time. Of course, I'm partial to all the time. <laughs> this is a pitch modulation of the reverb, which is a way you can get sort of a coarse reverb sound. I like it around noon. Actually, no, right around here. It can get really wild. So right around here for a little bit of richness with that. Okay, uh, this is the input level. Crank that, Mother Hubbard. There is a setting for this where you can set it to uh, a certain range of the input signal. I'm, I'm pushing it pretty hard here. This is a high pass, which is very, very useful to taking uh, bass sounds out of your reverb, which is good because bass doesn't really generally do well with uh, big reverbs. And then a dampener. which is the opposite, sort of a low pass. Which is probably going to sound really good modulated. So a much more sort of traditional reverb, right? 
And so if you were looking for that from your Aurora, we've got it now. If I turn the reverse on, we get one of my favorite things in the world, which is a reverse sound. Now, there are two options for the reverse, and this is what's really cool. So if I hit shift and reverse, what's going to happen is right now, the signal is being reversed before it hits the reverb um, and then passed into the feedback delay network. So the signal that we're hearing this, excuse me, right here, you can hear that the reverb is reversed. But if we hit shift and this, what will happen is it will reverse the sound after. Which sounds a bit different, especially if we turn this all the way wet. So, one is more diffused, one is different. <laughs> Basically, when you take that reverb and reverse it, the, ho the whole reverb structure is being reversed, which is completely different. So, not bad. That's all I wanted to show you today. <laughs> I wanted to show you the alt firmware for Aurora and the new firmware for Data Bender. So, uh, thanks for watching. I hope you have a very modular day. And um, I guess I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.